Good evening. It is lovely to be with you this evening as we continue to gather together this week for the Lenten series of Praying with the Psalms. And tonight we will be reflecting and reading on Psalm 75. And we would encourage you to have a, a Bible to look at and whether that is a paper version or if you're using an app on whatever device that suits you. Another option is to tap on the link to Bible Gateway, which you can find along with this video. And this will take you directly to tonight's psalm, which is from the NIV UK version. Being able to read from the Bible is a good practice to develop and it provides nourishment for our lives. So to help us settle into this time together, the candle here will be lit. And if you have one at home, please light it at the same time. So let's begin. We light this candle to see the flame that arises from the dark wick, giving light, giving warmth, and a reassurance through the Holy Spirit of the presence of Jesus in our homes, and praying that the light that breaks through the darkness will give us peace and hope in our lives. Come Holy Spirit. We will continue to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit by encouraging a sense of stillness within ourselves. Just relax your shoulders, gather your scattered thoughts into one and picture yourself laying them down at the feet of Jesus. Then lift up your head and focus on the face of Jesus, breathing slowly in and out during this moment of silence. Holy Spirit, come into your homes and let us be aware as you settle into our hearts, into our minds, with the gentle yet deep love of you, Jesus. Let us be open to what you want Jesus to say to each of us tonight. Heavenly Father, I welcome you here in my home, in my life, in my heart, and so hand over anything I know that is not pleasing to you, and so can then fully return to you and have a clear vision of what you desire for my life and how I can be a blessing to others, which will be a witness to your love and grace. Amen. And in Psalm 75 tonight, tonight, it is in a section three of the Psalms, and there are five sections in all, and it is uncertain why they were divided up like that and for what purpose. And one line of thought is that it was to match the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. However, this section consists of Psalm 73 to Psalm 89, and the majority are written by Asaph. And Asaph was one of a number of Levites that King David assigned to be worship leaders, as is mentioned in 1 Chronicles 16. And Asaph was the chief leader and was a, a singer, a poet, and also a prophet. And in this particular psalm, Asaph's words, they are in verses 1 and then 6 to 9, and God's words are in verses 2 to 5 and then 10. And this psalm is one of looking forward to better times, which is in sharp contrast to those psalms which are laments. Laments looking back to events when the Israelites suffered hardships under their enemies and they despaired because they felt that God had abandoned them and allowed their enemies to win and also to mock God. But Asaph commences tonight's psalm with praising and exalting God and reminding people of all that God had done for them, to remember his wonderful deeds and that God is always near. And Asaph is concerned that people concentrate too much on the bad things that happen and are pessimistic for the future, worrying that the earth will be destroyed 
and they will be no more. But God's words remind us that all things will be in his timing. He can see the bigger picture and that even in the times of turmoil, God will be holding the earth up. His hands are keeping it from complete destruction. God declares his power and warns people not to believe that they are more powerful than God. And he says, do not lift your horns against heaven. Horns are a descriptive name for human power. And a visual of the horns being used to terrify people coming against them and strength against the weak. Using the horns to throw people aside, causing injury, even death, to those who get in the way of building their own so-called kingdoms here on earth. And Asaph then reminds us that true exaltation, being lifted up, means being lifted up, only comes from God. He will decide who he honours and who he will bring his wrath against. He alone is the judge and he will decide on what the sentence will be. And in another visual used by Asaph, he says that the punishment for those who have come against God will be final and will be complete. The cup contains the wine of judgment and every last drop of the judgment will be delivered. But the New Testament has given us a different portrayal of the cup when Jesus in the upper room used the cup of wine as a way of remembering what Jesus would do for us on the cross and so the promise of eternal life. Then Asaph says, but for me, for me, I will focus on God and give him all the praise and glory that he deserves. Asaph is making a positive commitment to give God the glory and so teaching us to let God get about his business for sorting out the good and evil. We don't need to be deciding who deserves to be punished and who doesn't. That only distracts us from focusing on God. We need to be seeking God's will for our lives and what he wants us to do here on earth. Our worries and concerns can be brought to God in prayer and then left down because we have given them into the hands of God for him to decide what needs to be done and when. It then leaves us free to have more enthusiasm and in effect have more space in our head to think about how we can care and help others. And in the final verse, God has the last word. The bad will perish and the good will be lifted up. This is what the great I am saith. It is a foretelling of the day when Jesus will return to earth and there will be marvellous celebrations for those who have done right by God. So let us read the psalm and as we do, hold on to the thoughts that God will always have the last word. We are in safe hands and Jesus will return to earth. And after we've read the psalm, we'll pause for silence before we pray together. So let us read together Psalm 75. We praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge with equity. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. To the arrogant I say, Boast no more, and to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak so defiantly. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down, he exalts the other. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine, mixed with spices. He pours it out, and all the wicked of the earth drink it down 
to its very dregs. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob, who says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we lose sight of you, which is so easy to do in the midst of a worldwide epidemic and all that this brings into our lives. And this can heighten our fears and worries and as the months pass we can feel downhearted because we previously had hopes that the virus would be curtailed last year or at the beginning of this year or early spring. And now we can feel all this has gone on too long. And when will things open up again and we can be able to move about freely? But Lord, we know in our hearts that you are the answer to our concerns. Help us to lift up our heads and see you everywhere around us. Let us put words of praise on our lips, in our mouths, and let us rejoice and be glad in you. Let us, like Asaph, make a commitment to declare that you are the God who saves. You are the God who cares. You are the God who loves us. You are our God, the one and only. You are our God who holds up the pillars of the earth. And Lord, let us be a people who are contagious, not to spread a virus, but to spread the love of Jesus to those around us, using as Christians our certainty that no matter what happens, we have the promise of an eternal life that is so vividly expressed in Revelation as was spoken in Alan's sermon. A new heaven, a new earth, God's dwelling place, come down and he will dwell among his people. No more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things will have passed away. Lord, let your light shine in our hearts, in our faces, in our acts of kindness, so we can be a blessing to others, giving them hope, giving them joy, giving them Jesus in their lives. And Lord, we are so fortunate that we have governments in the UK who have ensured that there are vaccines available for the population. And we give thanks for that and for the GP surgeries and vaccination centres who are working tirelessly to ensure that the vaccine is given to us. And we pray for those countries where the rollout of the vaccines is slow, even non-existent. And we cry out on behalf of the people who are being neglected and left unprotected. We pray that in your mercy, you will break the hearts of the people who have the power to make decisions affecting so many people, that they will change their minds and hearts so they will recognize and feel the misery that they are inflicting on so many people. And Lord, change their hearts, change their minds. We pray for those countries broken by wars and famine and now having to endure the effects of the pandemic. May those people know your comfort, strength and endurance. We give thanks for the many people from within those countries who strive to give their people a better life and those agencies who work alongside them bringing extra resources and skills. We pray for churches and missionaries who give of their time, gifts and energy to spread the good news. And we pray for protection for them and that there will be a harvest of souls. And we too ask that we will be ambassadors for Jesus, that there will, there will be a harvest here in Newton Arts. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us up. Amen.
and we continue to pray together using the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And thank you for joining us tonight, and we look forward to being with you tomorrow night at 7pm, when Alan will be sharing Psalm 76 with us. And so a final prayer for you. Circle us, Father God. Keep strength within and weakness without. Keep faith within and doubt without. Keep light within and darkness without. Surround us with your love. Surround us with your protection. Surround us with your peace. Amen.